37 Republicans have sent a letter to uh, Majority Leader Harry Reid asking to form a select committee in the Senate to investigate uh, Benghazi in a comprehensive manner, something we have not done. Here's my concern about what we've done in the Senate as a body when it comes to Benghazi. There are gaps in the Senate uh, investigation of Benghazi. To their credit, this is a Senate Intel Committee report with a minority uh, point of view that says basically the attack was preventable, but the Senate Intel Committee had no jurisdiction over the State Department. So I think it's a pretty good job in terms of what the Intel Committee's role in Benghazi was, but it's by no means a comprehensive view of what happened. Uh, December the 30th, 2012, Joe Lieberman and Susan Collins did a report uh, from the Homeland Sec uh, Committee's uh, point of view about Benghazi. Very interesting reading, but a lot has happened since then, including the Ben Rhodes email. Now, the other two committees of jurisdiction, the Senate Committee on Armed Services, this is their report. It's a blank sheet of paper, completely unacceptable. We have not examined Department of Defense's role and issued a report on how we were unable to help these people on 9-11 of all days for over nine hours. This is a report that the Senate Armed Services Committee did in 2008 about the treatment of detainees in U.S. custody. It was bipartisan. I was part of it. So was Senator McCain. Working together in a bipartisan fashion, the committee issued a report in detail about the failure of the Bush administration's policies regarding detention. To say that I am upset would be an understatement. This was the right thing to do when it came to the Bush administration's failure regarding detainee policy. This is the wrong thing to do when it comes to Benghazi, where four Americans died, nothing. Uh, okay. The Foreign Relations Subcommittee, I mean, excuse me, the Foreign Relations Committee. This is their report. Nothing. This is the committee in charge of oversight for the State Department. They've not issued a report at all in the U.S. Senate. So 37 Republicans are asking Senator Reid to regroup and come out with a select committee format to get to the bottom of what happened to Benghazi to issue a thorough, comprehensive report. We think it matters. We think the Senate has been derelict in its job. We've had a very partisan view of Benghazi. That's unfortunate. The Intel Committee did a very good job. Armed Services and Foreign Relations ha have done nothing when it comes to DOD and the State Department. And I think that is a uh, stain on the Senate's reputation of being an oversight body. Next, this is a very famous photo. This is the photo of our president and his team on the night of the bin Laden raid. Everybody in the world knows moment by moment what our president did as commander in chief and what our national security team did to uh, kill bin Laden. I would give the president an A plus when it comes to bin Laden because that was a gutsy call. A million things could have happened going into Pakistan he deserves all the credit that's come his way. There have been two movies made about this. Classified information has been leaked to the New York Times and other news outlets describing in very great detail the operation to the point that there's a criminal investigation of the Obama administration for leaking classified information regarding the bin Laden raid. Some of that information resulted in the doctor who helped us in Pakistan going to jail. This is Bin Laden. This is Benghazi. Nothing, nothing about what the president did in terms of photographic information. Now, uh, first area of inquiry. Now let's start with this one. The first one, just leave it up. This was issued on September the 10th. During the briefing today, the President and the Principals discussed specific measures we are taking in the homeland to prevent 9-11 related attacks as well as steps taken to protect U.S. persons and facilities abroad as well as force protection. Okay, 
that was the White House's statement. What I want to know, did anybody talk to the president about Libya and Benghazi? Because this statement reassures the American people that we're on top of protecting the homeland and our facilities abroad the day before the attack. I want to know. Senator, could you talk to him on the mic? Okay. Thank you, sir. This statement on September the 10th was a uh, readout, and I want to know, was the President of the United States briefed about the security situation in Libya? And how could you make this statement on the 10th of September, given now what we know about Libya? Did Libya even come up in this discussions about being prepared for attacks abroad? <clears throat> if it did, in what context? If not, why? So this is questions to me unanswered. I want to know about that briefing. We have provided every bit of information that we have and we will continue to provide information. That was a reassuring statement by the President. That statement has fallen apart. The Ben Rhodes email and a mountain of other information that's come from this administration either through an independent judiciary requiring them to release it or a persistent Congress. Where was the President? Here's what we know. At 5 o'clock, he had a pre-planned meeting with Panetta and Dempsey. The attack had just started. They have testified under oath. They informed the president in that meeting that this was a terrorist attack, a uh, coordinated terrorist attack. They never mentioned a protest caused by video. We know uh, he had an hour-long phone call with the Israeli prime minister. We've been able to find that out after a lot of effort. This is the, during the height of the attack. What was the president? Who, what was he talking to the Israeli Prime Minister about during this attack? 10 o'clock, brief phone call with Secretary Clinton. This is a statement uh, by former NSC spokesman Tommy Veter, who was working at the White House on September 11th. In a Fox News interview, he said President Obama was not in the Situation Room during the Benghazi attack. I don't know if that's true, but I want to know did he ever go to the Situation Room? They may be a good reason he didn't. But the one thing I'm not going to do is let the families rely upon this. We're going to fight hard to find out where our Commander-in-Chief was during this attack and what he did as the Commander-in-Chief. There's also a news story about White House, about debate prep briefers coming to the White House. I'm going to ask a simple question to the President. Did you prepare for the debate on September the 11th? And if you did, at what time? I want to know what our President was doing during the attack. And if the debate prep was going on during this time period, I want the American people to know it and they can make their own judgments. This is the one that's bothered me the most from day one, and this is Senator Ayotte's biggest contribution, I think, in Benghazi. She looked over the five television shows, and she called me and said, listen to what Susan Rice said about consulate security. This was five days after the attack. Uh, should be the 16th, right? Got the wrong date here. 16th, yeah. yeah. That's 16th, wrong date. Well, first of all, we had a substantial security presence with our personnel in the consulate in Benghazi. Nothing could have been further from the truth. Here's what I want to know. Who told Susan Rice about the level of security at the consulate in Benghazi? There was nothing in the intelligence talking points about the level of security. We now know that Benghazi was a death trap. But where did she get the... What information did she rely upon? Who briefed her and what information did they have available to make her believe she could say this honestly? What else did she say on the 16th? Well, we obviously did have a strong security presence. Obviously, we did not. Five days after the attack, how could Susan Rice, the UN ambassador to, for the United States to the United Nations, how could she make these two statements on national television about consulate security? One of two things. Somebody briefed her about this, and they should be fired if, for one of two reasons. 
they're completely incompetent or they were misleading her about the level of security because we're six weeks before an election. Or she made it up on her own. And if she just made this up and talked about the level of security without any information, but just wanted to portray strong security, then she should resign because she's not a reliable person when it comes to providing information to the American people about national security. I am not stopping until we know the source of these two statements. They mean a lot to me and I think to the families. What have we learned during our efforts to find out the truth about Benghazi? As to security, it was instantly recognizable to me that it was a terrorist attack, mainly because of my prior knowledge there. I almost expected the attack to come. We were the last flag flying. It was a matter of time. Lieutenant Colonel Andrew Wood, who was in charge of the 16-person National Guard Special Forces team, that was his view of the Benghazi consulate and how it was exposed. This is a statement that is very chilling to me. For me, the Taliban is on the inside of the building. Eric Nordstrom talking about the headquarters response to numerous requests for additional security. It was so bad months before the attack that he felt like the Taliban were on the inside of the headquarters in Washington because every time he asked for security, he was told no. Reconcile those two statements with what Susan Rice told us on 16th September. Where's the uh, security stuff? Over here. I'm going to leave this up. This is a history of attacks on the compound at Benghazi, uh, attacks on uh, the British, the Red Cross. This is a history of information coming from Libya regarding the unsecure nation of our, uh, uh, nature of our consulate in Benghazi absorb this if you can. In light of this, how could Susan Rice have said on 16 September we had strong, substantial, and significant security? Why was Susan Rice talking about Benghazi to begin with? She was the uh, U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations with no responsibility for consulate security or control over our facilities in Libya, but she chose to go on national TV, and I've always wondered why. Well, somebody in an NBC interview asked her why she was there. Here's what she said. Secretary Clinton had originally been asked by most of the networks to go on. She had an incredibly grueling week dealing with the protests around the Middle East and North Africa. Stop for a moment. If you believe Susan Rice, it was a request of Secretary Clinton to appear on TV. She declined, and if you believe Susan Rice, it was because Secretary Clinton had a grueling week. Is that important? I think it is. I am very suspicious of this statement. I think most of us who know Secretary Clinton understand she's a very energetic lady, been through a lot, quite frankly, a, a, a tough person. But let's just assume for a moment that's true. What does that say about Benghazi and about her leadership abilities? I don't believe this, but we'll never know until we talk to Susan Rice and ask Secretary Clinton. I was asked, I was willing to do so. It wasn't what I had planned for that weekend originally, but I don't re regret doing that. So the reason, according to Susan Rice, that Secretary Clinton was not on television because she had a grueling week. That to me is incredibly important and must be answered. Finally, this was a um, press release at 10 o'clock on September the 11th issued by Secretary Clinton's office. Some have sought to justify this vicious behavior as a response to inflammatory material posted on the internet. The United States deplores any intentional effort to denigrate the re religious beliefs of others. It's all about the video. 
She issues a press statement at 10 o'clock on September the 11th, putting in play the video narrative. Where did she, what information did she have to make her feel confident that was the source of the problems in Benghazi? Shortly after this, about 15 minutes later, she talks to the President of the United States briefly. Did she inform the President that this was the cause of the attack? Did he sign off on this statement? And does this explain where the video narrative came from? Did it start with Hillary Clinton 10 o'clock at night on the day of the attack? I want to know. With that, I'll turn it over to my colleague. Yeah, th thank you, Senator Graham. Uh, I couldn't agree more with the questions that Senator Graham has just posed that need to be answered. Uh, and I have some additional questions of my own. Uh, first of all, if you look at the talking points that were used, one of the things that struck me from the beginning is there actually is no reference to a video in those talking points. And as Senator Graham just referenced, I think one of the, the real questions is the intel talking points. Uh, the intel I'm referring to, correct, the intel talking points, not the White House talking points. The intel talking points uh, that the administration said that they relied upon, we now know that there's a reference to the video, of course, in the Ben Rhodes email. But uh, the reference to the video, uh, Ambassador Rice went on every Sunday show. Not only did she talk about the strong security presence we had in Benghazi, and we really should understand what was the source of that statement and why did she make that statement. But second, uh, the intel community, uh, when Deputy Director Morrill test testified before the House Intel Committee, he said that when he heard Ambassador Rice talk about the video on the Sunday shows, it, his take on it was that that was not something that the analysts, meaning the CI analysts, CIA intelligence analysts had attributed the attack to. So if our CIA analysts had not attributed this attack to the video, and in fact the video, uh, while there were mistakes in the talking points, which obviously have been with exclusion of the reference to Al-Qaeda and the way that those talking points went forward, which I'm deeply troubled by, if they didn't believe that it was attributed to the video, Again, where did Secretary Clinton get the statement we just saw about um, that night? And also that Sunday, how is it that Ambassador Rice went on every Sunday show and attributed the attacks and the protests, she called protests, directly to the heinous and offensive video when the intel community had not attributed it to the video and in fact it was not in the talking points? And I think it's astounding when you think about it. Uh, doesn't anyone have any intellectual curiosity about why Am Ambassador Rice, not only why did she go on the show, why did she say these things, why did she say things like Al-Qaeda has been decimated, when we know that Al-Qaeda affiliates were involved in the attack, and in fact there were references to Al-Qaeda removed from the talking points, but she has not testified. She has not testified about what, why she was on that show, why she made the statements that she did, uh, why she was the person that was at the point person and why she made the representation she did to the American people, uh, many of which have proven to be false. So I'm, I'm shocked that uh, people don't have intellectual curiosity over that. And it seems to me that I appreciate what the House Select Committee is going to do, uh, but certainly the Senate Foreign Relations Committee and not having issued a report on this and not having uh, pursued this aspect, but also the aspect of why was no one at the State Department held accountable uh, for the fact that there was a deteriorating security situation, the fact that the cables and the events in Benghazi showed that there were not only attacks uh, on the consulate itself, both in April and June, but the prior attacks uh, on the, uh, the British uh, con convoy of the British ambassador, the Red Cross. Uh, why has no one been held accountable for that? And when the statement that the president, that, that Senator Graham put up, uh, that was issued before September 11th, was the president aware 
of the course of conduct and the set of circumstances of the deteriorating security situation in Benghazi? I think that's a fair question that has not been answered as well. And then finally, I think the answer that uh, the victims, those families that lost their loved ones in service to our country because of the Benghazi attack, I know what they want to know most of all. Why has no one been held accountable for this? Why is it that we have seen press reports of people like Abu Qatala having been charged with being not only involved in it, but perhaps a leader of the attack on our consulate, uh, yet he's giving open press interviews in Libya, but we have not gone after him or any of the other individuals that have been reported in public press reports to have been charged with this incident. To me, that is the question that we need to get to the bottom of. Uh, we need to understand what is being done to pursue the perpetrators of the terrorist attack on behalf of the victims of this terrorist attack. And uh, most of all, also, once we capture the individuals who have committed this attack, and I hope that every effort is made to capture these individuals, and it seems to me that both the House and the Senate have an important oversight function to make sure that everything is being done to capture these terrorists. When they are captured, how will they be treated? Will the administration actually interrogate these terrorists and find out everything that they know about the attack on our consulate so that we can get the full picture of why they attacked our consulate, what they hope to accomplish, who they worked with, what their involvement is with Al Qaeda. And to me, one of the troubling patterns we've seen with this administration is that so many terrorists, uh, they've picked up and they've put them right in our court system without fully interrogating them. So not only do I believe that the American people deserve an answer of why no one's been held accountable and why we haven't gone after them and brought them to justice, but I would also like to know from the administration, when they are captured, how will they be treated? Will they be fully interrogated? So not only do we get the truth from the State Department that we deserve, from the White House that we deserve, from the armed services and armed forces about the response that night, but also uh, from holding those terrorists accountable that committed this act to make sure that we for fully are in a position to interrogate them once we capture them. Thank you.